So if you are uh, looking for a GPU talk, you can leave the room now. Come back in 20 minutes. So maybe I'm Please in the wrong. Please don't leave. Uh, I'm in the wrong room uh, because uh, the uh, two previous talks and the next following talk will be GPU centered. We are a nonprofit, a very small nonprofit. Uh, we don't have the resources, uh, the kind of people were talking about. We cannot afford a GPU on a cloud also. So what we do? We do whatever we get and whatever is the cheapest. So uh, with that, I am Sanjay Sood. I represent Momacmo Limited here. Uh, it's a small nonprofit started by Chuck Moshe. Uh, we are in the, uh, the mission of our uh, nonprofit is uh, uh, using geophysics uh, for greater good. So anybody who has big heart and a lot of money can donate. We are a RIS, IRS 5013C uh, nonprofit, so you are welcome to donate. Uh, any, any form or any welcome, we are doing a lot of good projects. And one friend from Amazon, we are thankful. They have nonprofit, and we are using their free resources and all that. With that, that's all I will talk about. Now uh, let's move on to the... Uh, yeah, the outline. So we believe there are significant opportunities to take advantage of asynchronous. Now people are already doing the high-end asynchronous. You heard the two previous talks. We are not talking about the GPU asynchronous. We are talking about some very low-end CPU asynchronous uh, style of uh, computation, which cloud enables. So. Uh, in this talk, I'll, uh, we will describe a framework for using cloud-based microservices for seismic data processing. We'll review the cloud components that are used to construct microservices, describe the advantages of using application programming interfaces and objects rather than focusing on particular computer languages or data formats, and then describe the objects and protocols we use in our JavaSide cloud framework. We provide an example of how we manage uh, the millions of tasks and a summary of our experience so far. Uh, with our data in the cloud, we found that deploying data science and machine learning algorithms was significantly easier than in our current framework. Hopefully by the end of uh, this uh, talk, you will agree that our ag experience points to significant opportunities for transforming how we think about seismic processing and imaging in this in the cloud. I already see a change. I had a talk last, uh, and now I see so many people are talking about the asynchronous. Of course, their uh, workloads and their applications are different. Uh, but let's talk about, so whatever we are doing, so as Alex already mentioned, uh, Java size is a brainchild of uh, Chuck Mosher. Uh, this has been used in the oil in industry uh, for more than two decades, and it's a standard uh, for, it has been heavily used. So it's a framework for writing the seismic data, uh, but it is, uh, it lends very well for simplest uh, parallel computing, and we derive a lot of uh, the learnings from that uh, and we are importing those into the cloud world where we can use those learnings for using the asynchronous style of uh, computing which is available uh, in, the, in the cloud. Uh, these applications are uh, just as efficient in the cloud uh, today and using dedicated resources as they are using custom built in-house computing facilities. We do not advocate replacing these applications where they are currently working well, but to complement these systems with an additional model for parallel seismic computing that plays to the strength of the cloud. So that is what we are saying. And here, so uh, large MPI jobs uh, uses all the code, but rarely runs 100%. So micro tasks can be submitted to utilize these unused cycle. I remember there was a talk by a Rice professor here last, uh, last uh, meeting where they were talking about similar things. And we are also talking about the same thing. So micro tax submissions can be throttled back if the MPI utilization increases. The number of concurrent micro tax grows and shrinks with the available capacity. So now, uh, Go back. 
Okay. Uh, in order to take advantage of the scale and the low cost of the cloud system, we need to transform uh, appropriate applications to match the cloud native programming framework. There are significant numbers of workflows that run on synchronous parallel computing system that could be adapted to asynchronous task computing. A key, a key need is high performance IO that can scale with the task computing model. New tools for managing and submission and completion of millions of tasks are needed as well. Meeting these requirements requires re-architecturing our applications to take advantage, uh, advantage of the model of parallel computing. So the components of uh, uh, microservice. Fortunately for us, the cloud computing systems have matured significantly in the past decade and now provide all the components needed to create a viable microservice based platform for seismic processing. We have created a reference uh, implementation of a microsurface uh, framework for seismic data processing that utilizes the components. We call our implementation Java Size Cloud and utilize the following component. The key value object storage provides scalable low cost storage for large data sets. Example includes the Amazon's uh, uh, simple storage service or uh, blob storage from Azure. The serverless compute functions provide the horsepower needed for seismic computations. These services are stateless in that no assumption of persistent resources in memory are provided, but they provide reasonable bandwidth for to key value object storage systems. Examples include your uh, Amazon's Lambda and Azure function. Application pro uh, programming interface, APIs provide access to compute and storage services over the internet. Uh, so example could be uh, Amazon's API gateway or Azure's API management. Messaging and notification services provide an additional model for activating the serverless compute functions. When messages or notifications are received, uh, serverless compute functions can be invoked to complete tasks. Examples include uh, the Amazon's simple notification service or Azure's uh, notification hub. Uh, desktops and mobile devices can use these resources to orchestrate the submission and monitoring of millions of tasks that make up what would traditionally be viewed as a single large MPI job. So that is what we are talking about uh, here. So uh, a storage in the cloud, then triggering some Lambda function, using some uh, messaging services and monitoring it using the the web-based uh, console services uh, which are provided by all the web providers, uh, all the cloud providers. So uh, this was, this is the same slide we used last year. So this is uh, what describes the how the Java size uh, framework for data storage works. It lends itself very well to the key storage object, uh, key object storage uh, provided by by the cloud service providers. So that is what we are using here. And uh, uh, this is an example from S3 storage on Amazon, how we can uh, very easily adapt the functionalities of Java size uh, uh, data context into this key storage, uh, uh, um, uh, key storage, key object storage on, on Amazon or any, any other uh, uh, cloud. So for details, you can uh, refer to our talk last uh, from the last year. Uh, now let's talk about the uh, the compact uh, state of seismic task. We need to provide sufficient state information to a seismic processing micro task to allow it to locate the input data it needs, perform computations, and send output to the right location. In our Java size cloud implementation, we prefer sending compact state objects rather than requiring tasks to access a database. This reduces the complexity and startup cost for the task. We can avoid the use of database tables uh, for spatially varying parameters by performing the lookup on the 
host application and sending localized parameters for each task. The state object itself is serialized on uh, serialization of the Java size context object. Uh, so which would be which would be something like this and uh, and by performing the lookup on the local host does the state is object uh, is object and processing parameters to JSON, the de facto standard for uh, transmitting context and uh, state information to APIs. The size of JSON file is typically of the order of 10 to 50 kilobytes, and if compressed, it turns into a few kilobytes using gzip. So now, uh, a JSC seismic frame object. A uh, seismic processing compute task will require access to seismic data and trace headers. We define seismic frame object that contains a reference to the Java size context of the originating data set, a 2D frame of traces, a 2D frame of trace properties, and a position objects that define object that defines the location of the frame in the Java size context. Methods are provided to access trace samples, get the set properties, and obtain iterators, and that automatically traverse the frame in the code. So now the uh, Java size cloud processing task. Uh, we base our Java size cloud processing task on the Java size parallel compute computing engine, which has been reported on here or in the other processings in the SEG, rather than uh, processing volumes with MPI, the JSC, which is Java size cloud computing, uh, uh, processing executive processes 2D frames. So it is not working on the volumes, it is working on the 2D frames one at a time. Processing modules are executed uh, sequentially with input and output at the head and the tail of the processing flow. Sorting is supported via an asynchronous parallel implementation of the Java size tile transpose sort, which will be, which we will cover in a later publication. Uh, given the task state, the executive allocates resources such as the trace sample arrays and the property buffer and then executes the processing flow. Uh, for those coders here, here is an example uh, Java code for uh, a Java size cloud processing module. The module uh, can communicate and collaborate using Java size shared objects such as parallel maps and distributed arrays. Modules can change the state of the Java size context at runtime and perform operations like dimension reduction, sorting, stacking, modules can read and write from available local disk, object storage, and access databases. Since microservices uh, service tasks must be lightweight, care must be taken to limit memory usage and keep runtimes below defined limits. Java size cloud uses standard logging facilities for as to assist in tracking uh, resource usage. Now, here is an example of a processing workflow. So the data set here, which we have used, is a DAS data set acquired on top of a glacier up north from Vancouver in Canada. Uh, it was a three kilometer long disk cable laid on the top of the glacier. Uh, they acquired the data for 30, uh, 30 days, way back in 2019. And uh, the total, uh, I think it was two terabytes of a data set in the HDF format. We loaded the data onto the S3 cloud and then uh, then uh, did the, so here we are saying it's a continuous recording of the data uh, and uh, here we are talking about uh, how we read the data, how we uh, uh, window the data uh, uh, with the data in the proper order we can use the traditional uh, seismic processing algorithms to pre-process and extract features from the data. We then use machine learning libraries to train the models and detect seismic events and predict the location of the sources. A single task can predict, can achieve 
Uh, I think there was somebody mentioning that uh, we, somebody reported that we were getting the speeds up to 10 Gbps. But here what I'm saying is that uh, a single uh, uh, I.O. from uh, S3 to a server, to a compute node is of the order of 10 to 20 Mbps. And throughputs from object uh, storage and conduct significant computation. Virtual CPUs in the cloud can deliver up to tens of gigaflops. We are, we are not looking at uh, the things we were seeing below with the exaflop and those kind of, we are happy with these tens of gigaflops. But we, if we get thousands of those, they are good enough for, uh, for our purposes. So that is what we are talking about. We are not talking about using that. A single task, uh, then the Amazon defines the default uh, concurrency limit for the lambda function. I think Tom is here. It is 1,000 lambda functions at one time. That is what they can run. Otherwise, I think you have to pay for us. So our limit is 1,000 uh, for all the practical purposes. Uh, uh, so this will, uh, what this does is, uh, if we can run thousands of those jobs, so we can get I.O. rates from our storage in the, in the S3 if we choose it cleverly, like we, if we uh, choose a S3 in, say, U.S. Uh, East 1 and also using the compute node in the U.S. East 1, we are getting those kinds of uh, that. So with the 1,000, we are getting around 10 to 20 gigabytes uh, uh, GBPS, uh, that is the I.O. rate we were getting when we were serving. So yesterday somebody was mentioning that uh, we mentioned in the last presentation that we were getting 10 GPS. These were not the rates we were getting for uploading the data from the in-frame to the cloud, but these are the rates which we were getting while we were processing the data. So let's move, I think uh, Alex has stood up, so it looks like I am close to my finishing time. So here is a next uh, slide where example of some machine and monitoring the job. So uh, same object uh, used for all tasks, serialized to a JSON, then uh, construct and send API request for task submission, trigger serverless function that issue message notification for the task. Each message tr triggered serverless task and performs computation. And true console of the API request and application. Uh, observation so far. Uh, in conclusion, we, 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 even though our industry has long been working with the big data, we believe there is much to learn from the successes in the cloud computing world. In addition to the shifting traditional workloads to the cloud, we believe there is a significant opportunity to reduce, reduce time and cost for assessing processing and imaging by adopting native cloud computing frameworks. In support of this goal, we have implemented Java Size Cloud, an example for implementation of microservices framework for seismic data processing. Uh, with appropriate horizontal scaling, we, we have been able to match the performance of dedicated HPC systems with reasonable cost and modest refactoring of the existing code. The cloud provides a wide range of services for engineering scalability and fault tolerance. We also believe the, the, that bringing seismic data uh, closer to the data science uh, platforms and practitioners would lead to transformation of seismic processing and imaging industry uh, to a lower cost and more inclusive ecosystem. Thank you for your uh, attention. I think 